This is disgusting. And I love it. People are being murdered the other side of the wall, right? Don't tell anyone. And I swear I'm going to make a pun that is going to get me cancelled. So we've got Swashbucks, me hearties. It's Game of Cones, Poultry Geist, the Ghost Coast, Pizza My Heart, Brutiful Coffee. It's ours that bring them to the yard. Sandies, let's get physical. Guys, I'm not even sorry. Oh, spat everywhere. It feels like I've robbed Fantasy Island because that's exactly what I've done. <laughs> so, murder park. Hey everybody, how's it going? So how'd you like them new titles then? Welcome to a brand new park build series. So you've already seen the fun we had in Fundy Fun Spot in those opening titles. And of course we've done Raygate Lake, so you've already seen me do too. I think it's time we turn up the heat on a park. What would happen if someone like Cedar Fair were to open a park in the UK? So may I please welcome you to Chacholandia. All right then guys, so welcome to the entrance area of our brand new park, Chacholandia. And yes, we're asking the question, what would happen if Cedar Fair were to open a park here in the UK around about the year 2015? So it's a park that has to land in an already established scene. You know, you've got Merlin parks and you've got London, London Resort coming and it's a park that has to be big enough budget to land very well in order for it to be a success. So that's what we're going for here. And like most theme parks tend to use themes and stuff, don't they, to, to have their entrance areas. You know, you've got like adventures or you've got a uh, fairy tale or pirate or whatever. But I wanted to go for stark modernism and that's why this is looking a bit like cold. But this is by design. It's like very adolescent. It's very bright colours. Actually, it's borrowing quite a lot from Carowind. So this park is going to actually take a lot of the design cues from Thorpe Park, Cedar Point, Dorney Park, uh, probably Energylandia and also Carowinds as well, because I like the clean design that you get in here. And so I can keep the episode short. Uh, I'm, I'm actually going to show you around the bits that I've done and then just talk you through the rest. So I want to do shorter, fewer updates with a bigger with a bigger reveal. So this is the ticket office that I've chosen here. It's a design and you can see the, the off show of one in the background. Uh, this is a design that I saw on one of the south coast somewhere, I don't remember where, but I remember just thinking, oh my god, this would make an awesome ticket office. So I've gone for uh, this dark blue colour palette and also uh, the pink and the blue uh, gradient to go through, obviously because of the channel colours. Uh, and then I've chosen the orange because it offsets as a clash colour with the blue and the pink. So they're going to be the main three colours for the entrance area, but obviously not throughout the park. There's going to be different themed areas and stuff. We're talking much higher budget than Raygate Lake, but Raygate Lake also um, was built on real life blueprints or real life principles, right? So this park is going to share that. And because I'm going back to high detail, the pace of this park needs to come down. Like the UK is unlocking from lockdown from the pandemic and we're going from pretty much being told we're going to get tased by Boris Johnson if we leave our house to go and live your life again. And I need to go and do that. So I need to slow the pace of the of the builds down, but whilst maintaining the quality <laughs> tased by Boris Johnson. Uh, <laughs> I just got to leave that in. Uh, so this is inside the ticket office then. It's as you'd expect. It's narrower than the Raygate Lake one uh, because we're going to have a central um, office. But this has got all of your typical stuff that you'd find in here. So you'd have a back a back display. This time we're displaying the logo of the park on the back wall. We've got the video screens promoting stuff within the park. We've got all of the toys and everything hanging around. Uh, all of the computers, the telephones and everything that are in the front here. I need to be careful with the camera because I've got frame rate back so the camera is really hypersensitive <laughs> this is like gonna make you sick um not that I'm great at camera work anyway so yes yeah, so you've got all of your typical com computers and you've got all your stuff that are, like waiting for you to to go uh tickets please and uh yeah, so we've also got like office space stuff here. So you've got loads of boxes, boxes and clutter. And I'm now using a lot more Theme Makers Toolkit items now than I was in Raygate, by the way. So there's stuff in here that I didn't have in Raygate. You know, like um, the plugs on the walls and like little fine details. So actually, I, I like this ticket office more than I liked Raygates, even though Raygates was wider, it off offered a bit more space. This is a, just a ticket office and this is all it needs to be, right? So from the outside then, uh, this is literally a building that only contains probably three or four pieces from the base game. Everything else is Theme Maker's Toolkit. Uh, and it's just the screens and uh, possibly the floor that's base game. The rest is all Theme Maker's Toolkit. I'm not even sorry. Uh, <laughs> so, But yeah, so I've gone for this panel and this uh, 
this roofing and everything. And then the other side is just a duplicate. It's got a little few few tweaks, a little few tweaks. Uh, so like there's a door here uh, that's going to come into an office space. It's got, whoops, uh, an office space is going to be here. And that's going to be the equivalent of the office space we saw at the back of the ticket offices in Raygate Lake. In terms of actual um, entrance area then, so this is a typical entrance plaza. You've got uh, a very wide plaza area to, to hold all of your guests at the start of the day. They all get funneled through your turnstiles and then they get funneled into the park and then it's going to come to like a central thing here and then it's going to spray out. So it's going to be a bit spoken wheel uh, on this one. The box office, just like Ray Gates, is in two parts. One this side of the turnstiles and one park side of the turnstiles. But this time it's c going to be connected by a central office in the middle here. Uh, so we've got the box office and a box office. Very similar design. Remember, it's going to uh, have very similar design because it's the same company. So the, the parks would look almost similar. Um, but the colours are different on this one. So I wanted to go for something bold on the front desk and then just a nice neutral color on the back just to make it stand out and of course i'm going to clutter this out with theme makers toolkit stuff and do the roof this of course is going to be a skylight because we like our vanity stuff um turnstiles i haven't even started yet right so i've just put this building in just as a placeholder just to make it uh, look good i just need to do all of its fine details here box office this side again i've just started to lay it out like it's no detailing to it i just need to finish it off this i think is going to be lockers I'm not sure. Lockers. This is going to be toilets. So this is very much Carowinds, right? This is pretty much stolen the layout from Carowinds. Uh, this is going to be a back of house area. I don't know if I'm going to put some kind of warehouse or anything in. But unlike Carowinds and Co, this is going to be the main um area that we're going to be doing all of our maintenance and servicing and everything and then all of the service roads will come through and, and around there's going to be terrain changes in the park as well uh there's a couple of things that i want to do like down here so that's all that's all coming but anyway i'm gonna cut this one short so i can carry on detailing the box office i'll see you in mo all right then you guys so things are really really starting to come together i realized by the way in the first update i didn't show you how some stuff was built so i'm going to do that in uh, this one but since our last chat there's quite a lot of change that's happened so you can see that the flooring in the main plaza area is now pretty much laid out as I want it I think I'm happy with the colors I think I'm happy with the layout and yes it does borrow the same pattern as Raygate Lake and in fact you have to remember that Raygate Lake and other theme parks will all use the same operational blueprint. So if you've seen one park, you've seen all of the others. The only difference you'll ever see is that the buildings are decorated differently. They're laid out differently. They're in different locations. But ultimately, their functions serve exactly the same purpose and they will be decorated using very, very similar things. Have a look next time you visit multiple parks. Honestly, you will see it. Once you've seen one maintenance service area, you've seen them all. Once you've seen one ticket booth, you've seen them all. Once you've seen one box office or guest services, you've seen them all. They all serve the same function. So please have that in mind before you start ripping me apart in the comments to say, this is just Raygate Lake. That's the point. It's supposed to be. <laughs> so, 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 where do we even start? Uh, so the box office, I have done a load of work in the box office. Uh, this is a much classier version of uh, a box office. Obviously the Raygate Lake one was very much in your face, as sickly as you could possibly imagine. But this park is going for a much cleaner, much more modern colour scheme, much more modern feel to it. It's not cluttered out with service stuff. So in the Raygate Lake episode, I said a park like Raygate Lake would would want to like throw as many adverts and whatever in your face as humanly possible because, you know, they're trying to sell as much as they can. For this park, they're reliant on their own image and their own self-worth to do the selling for you. You can already see what the park is all about because you've got the big rides in the distance on the sight line and you've probably already seen it. And so that's what they're doing here. They're going for that very subtle uh, the desk itself here uh, is just made up of... I'm going to have to come out of uh, thingy. There we go. Uh, it's just made out of the TMTK uh, squares that you get, so the flat shapes that you get, just on an angle. And then it's just lined off with some beams. Uh, hydro letters, as you can see on the front here. And then cluttered out with all of your usual office stuff. So, you know, your computers, your tat, so books and merchandise and things. Then you've got the pin... Um, collectibles rack and then you've also got bottles on the back shelf you've got 
a, a person, <laughs> a film crew person, loads of plushies, loads of bags, uh, filing cabinets, and then of course the photocopier. I love the technique that was given to me during Raygate Lake. It's just absolutely amazing. The photocopier sunk into the ground to make it look like a uh, sunk into the desk to make it look like a printer, and then of course you've just got loads of um, like all of the screens and everything in the background just making adverts for, for stuff because of course you are still going to advertise things but this is just not as in your face uh, as you want you're not trying to monetize this area because it's not that big and then of course you've got uh other stuff that you're going to need in here as well so you've got the vending machines you've got the strollers and everything that you can get um, and then i've just dotted this out with some other stuff otherwise this area is kept clear uh, because it's a it's a small area it's not like the box office in Raygate Lake which is much larger where you could facilitate a queue this is very much a smaller box office because the park would be uh, probably servicing two different box offices which you'll see in a moment these walls by the way uh, they <laughs> come back in uh, they are again just the square flat shapes that you get nothing special and then loads of beams colored differently through a palette of colors uh, that I've just chosen uh, the, the palette at random and then uh, inside here uh, this is just the desk that you find on theme makers toolkit now that's a person let's not select her uh, <laughs> hello uh, uh, this is just a desk that you can find and it's the same office clutter so remember a computer is a computer regardless to where you use it whether it's in Raygate Lake or it's in this park or if it's in Fundy Fun Spot it's a computer is a computer it is what it is um, and so then you've got all of the usual office stuff so you know bins every desk that's part of the UK compliance you have to have access to a bin uh, and then just like clutter and everything around but like I said in the first update this is a very much a smaller thing so we're not going for too much uh, too much detail in here it's like a, a smaller functioning office because this is the functioning office so you've seen me do all of these before. Uh, there's nothing really new about these, uh, but this is just one of those uh, offices that you just pull together where you get loads of admin and stuff going on. So uh, we've got space here for hot desking. You've got space for staff. And of course, there is going to be an admin and an office block, but this would be the administration's office block. This would be where all of the tickets and turnstiles and everything are serviced. This would be where the staff that work there would, or the, the back of house staff that work there would work here. Uh, would work they would work here and uh that's perfect perfect grammar it's fine don't say anything uh, <laughs> and then you've also got uh, just a, a breakout area here um nothing fancy this is just thrown together because this is just a serviceable office so you've just got like the coffee machine and uh your microwave and, and whatever a couple of filing cabinets bit of decor thrown around you know all you all your usual stuff as you do and then just on the other side i've just kitted it out with a load more office stuff load more filing cabinets uh it's a much less uh, beautifully designed office than the uh Fundy Fun Spot one ever was. <laughs> and then we come into here. This is the second. No, this is the first one. Uh, I always I'm getting lost in my own park. Uh, so this is the second box office. So this is the this is Parkside. This one can facilitate a queue because it's ever so slightly wider than the first one. And there's not so much uh, desk space on this one, but it's ultimately the same design so it's consistent in look and feel it's consistent in decor it's consistent in theming it's consistent in fonts and everything uh, so this is just like a an extension of that office it's a slightly nicer place but this also double up, doubles up as rentals of course you can come in and you can get uh, your push chair and you can get your wheelchair and you can do all of that stuff in here continued across the uh, whole theme and look and feel of the entire front and the tickets this consistently comes across uh, and then of course we go into lockers and so here's our locker space and this is just a room of lockers now this one is slightly more monetized in the sense of there's more adverts and everything up because you're trying to start to influence your guests and more guests are going to enter your locker area than they will do your box office areas or your guest services areas so you don't need to uh, you don't need to worry about like the differences in in monetization but you would put posters and stuff up in here there's a couple of vending machines and uh, a couple of bins just need to do a bit of a theme makers toolkit pass in here just to make sure that i'm happy with everything but i don't think much more needs to be done like i've just noticed that there's a thing missing here so i just need to do some tidying up but i think this is pretty much done this is pretty much as a locker space would be right it's just a, a locker building that doesn't serve any other purpose than how housing lockers right so 
that's that. Then at the front here, I've just started to do how I uh, lay out how I want this whole plaza to be. So I've just put this little feature in in the front. This is uh, the usual fountain that you get. Uh, uh, yes, I do love my mulch, by the way. Uh, <laughs> this is just the usual fountain that you get from. I think it's the fairy tale pack. Um, a pack. It's the theme, isn't it? Because it comes with the base game. And I just covered the water over with mulch, and it just looks like it's a flower bed, and it looks awesome. I did originally have a bit of a blocky one. If you're looking at the community uh, tab that I've got, you would have seen my original version of that. I didn't like it. I've tore it. I tore it apart and, and did this instead. And then I've, I'm going to do some kind of flowers and planters down the bottom here, and then of course it comes out into the car park. This bit here is going to be more of a disabled area car park, um, and possibly VIP drop off kind of area so that's going to feed into another car park just need to sort that out so i'm going to carry on working on turnstiles here uh, i'm going to do the toilets and i'm going to go up to the bridge i don't know if i'm going to have time this episode to do the gift shop because i want to do the back of house bit here as well so i reckon we just shut up and we just see what we get done i'll see you in a minute all right then guys so this actually feels like it's much more of a massive leap than it really genuinely is it's just foliage we know that from the previous series that it all comes to life when you start doing flowers and stuff like that so yes i'm done for now this is the the, the first episode reveal and look tacholandia is starting to come to life it's starting to get a personality um i've started to do the car park and how i want it to be very much taking my design cues from thought parks car park so watch this space on that i'm going to need to develop this a little bit later i just wanted to know how everything is going to sit in the grander scheme of things with the entrance plaza done some tidying up all along here uh, just in case you were wondering this is the firehouse technique that i talk about all the time uh, so i've just I'm just using the firehouse roof to hide some misdemeanors when it comes to this diagonal diamond path. Uh, <laughs> and then I just put, you're walking through the flower beds, do you mind? Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, sorry, back on track. So I've just done some tidying up in this area uh, just to make it come to life. But remembering the principles of guest flow. You want this area to be as clear as possible because you're going to have a lot of guests flowing through it at the beginning and the end of the day. So you don't want to clutter this area out too much with bins and benches and, and stuff like that. So uh, I'm just making sure that that's clear. And all of the queues along here, they're all set to the side. So you do have a clear pathway in through this way. And then we come into... Uh, actually, let's do a, a proper tour. So the offices you've already seen inside, just touching up a minor works going on in here, uh, making sure... Uh, there's still some stuff I need to do, by the way. There's still some stuff that I'm not entirely happy with, but I'll get to that sort of when we tidy up the area in the car park and stuff. Uh, and then, of course, the office. We've already seen the actual office itself. Uh, backstage is now pretty much starting to be cluttered out again there's going to be a full backstage over here so I'm just starting the process in this area I've put down a warehouse type metal shed type thing it's made out of the let me show you um, metal wall set that comes from the theme makers toolkit it is awesome well that's a tree uh, so <laughs> yeah so it's just the metal uh, the metal panels that come in the theme makers toolkit and of course beams and the uh what they call the garage door is also done by beams and then just inside loads and loads and loads of cluttery type stuff let me just get rid of the ui uh, loads of cluttery type stuff that you've all seen me do this before um boxes and rails and all that sort of stuff in here because this is going to be some kind of storage and then i've just put in some water towers and everything uh, in here just to give it a bit of an industrial feel to it and then over here some propane tanks as well so uh, that was that's where all the gas and everything would be a couple of recycle bits around and just some general area clutter of course i'm going to come back and do a bit more cluttering once i know what the actual area is going to look like when it comes to the maintenance side so coming on to the turnstiles then this is now pretty much as i wanted it I wanted to keep them really simple uh, just literally turnstiles. Your security and everything would happen in front of the turnstiles, and obviously if they're not in uh, effect today. And then just the, the theme makers toolkit turnstiles, disabled access to make sure that you've still got uh, your wheelchair access and everything. And then at the end of the day, these turnstiles then collapse and they just become pillars. And then guests, as they're leaving, they'll just walk out. So you don't need a separate entrance and, and, and exit. Need to sort out why these are clipping through as well, because there's a barrier underneath here that's supposed to stop them. But obviously it's clearly not. Uh, so 
Coming into the actual main plaza then, this has changed quite a lot. Uh, this has come to life. I've borrowed quite a lot from uh, Carowinds on this one, but also Thought Park as well. The idea of having a long stretch after the turnstiles where uh, there's a road, service road that goes underneath. And at Thought Park, that's the lake, and then there is a service road, you just don't see it as much. And then in Carowinds, it's an actual service road that goes underneath the, underneath the path. So I'm copying that kind of idea. Feels like this park would try and do its best to hide all of its service roads and unlike Regate Lake where it was all on show you know it was let everything was let out on, on display uh, then we've got toilets so I quite like how this toilet building turned out actually I wanted it to be nice and simple I wanted to have vending machines in the front um, and I just wanted to have like privacy screens and stuff so that's kind of but I wanted it to also have that same that same theme you know it has to have the same look and feel and everything so that's what I've gone for here and then inside here, this is the first time I've ever kitted out toilet cubicles. And this is because I didn't really like how this appears. It just looks ugly from the inside. So I have put toilets in. Uh, these are not regulation size or anything like that. Um, I know I preach about how they need to be a certain size and everything. And I've kind of followed that principle with the width. But I've not followed the principles with the depth. Because, of course, we're using actual real-life game toilets, right? So kind of got to have a bit of a trade-off somewhere. But otherwise, in here, nice and simple. You've got all of your facilities that you'd expect to find in a toilet. You've got hand dryers. I found these on the workshop. My curious mind have put them up uh, as part of the swarm build. So I've actual, I've got actual proper hand dryers now. I haven't got to make my own anymore. And then the sinks and everything are just all along here. And then you've got, whoops, all of your advertising and everything that you would find uh, on the wall. The other toilet is the same. It's just a mirror image. Um, guests are obviously struggling at the moment to get in and out. Uh, <laughs> because it's the only toilets that we have so it's fine we'll just deal with it and then at the back I've just put a, uh, a stuff unit at the back just so I've got somewhere for the for the staff to actually to actually live right so box office then nothing has changed in these box offices uh, I quite like actually how the detail ended up so uh, just remember that this is this is all to do with the design principles of the park and how you set it out so this is where you'd come and get your rentals your fast passes and probably book your hotel reservations and stuff as well so uh, this is park side and then of course we've got the um, car park side which is the other one lockers some tidying up done in here then uh, it's put some AC units in I've done the missing bit on the pillar that's now <laughs> that's now in place uh, it turns out there was actually more than one of those so I need, just needed to do a bit of work on that uh, and then yeah just it's a simple room right it's just a room of lockers so it didn't need to be anything else it didn't need to be any more like daring or stuff then the main plaza area I've put some decoration down uh, so the brick you know I've used before it's the makers toolkit uh, the herringbone brick and then I just put some decoration down I just thought the area needed breaking up with something so it's just the concrete pillar that you find in uh, the base game just laid down on, into the ground and sunk down in and it just gives a, a nice little pattern on the ground and then these are the uh, the the lamps and the lights that I used in uh, Raygate Lake I've just dragged them in again because they're, they're awesome as floodlights and then I've just put the tree base you know the uh, the street tree base in there and just spun it around the same way that I did the sign at the very beginning uh, at, the, at the entrance then we've also got here beans this is just a real simple setup of a place uh, it's just a coffee shop that's just on the it just basically it's supposed to kill the view of what's down below right so it's just supposed to obscure the view so it's just a shack that pops up but I wanted this to be functional rather than using theme makers toolkit uh, because <laughs> I've noticed that there's not a lot in this entrance that's functional at the moment and I think that probably needs to change so that's what the coffee coffee place is all about uh, you can hear music so I'm hoping that it's not going to get copyright claimed but it feels like this park would make the effort with the music just to have a bit more ambience and everything uh, and then the trees I have chosen to use the uh, whatever they're called I can't remember what they're called the uh, Pand Ponderosa Ponderosa pine it feels like that's the kind of tree that would be used here um, along with the other trees that we normally that we normally have I just wanted to use a different tree uh, because I use the same ones all the time and I just wanted this to have a bit of a different feel to it this is probably somewhere in the northern part of England and this is quite common you'll find these kind of trees in the wooded areas and whatever and then I well 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 I had more time than I thought uh, and I wanted to do the gift shop and this is what I've this is what I've come up with. So taking all of that modern feel and the architecture that's coming from the entrance, I've put together this gift shop. It felt like the original rainbow concept I had for the ticket offices I still wanted to use in the park somewhere. 
so that's what I've done here. I've used the rainbow on here. It's actually taken from, <laughs> believe it or not, a bakery in, uh, I think it's Basildon, famous bakery chain that we have here in the UK. And it's it's very much inspired by their shop that they have in a, in a um, retail complex. So it looks awesome. And then inside, it's just your typical gift shop. It's nice, open, airy. I wanted this one to be modern, uh, whereas the previous ones I've done have all been really quite enclosed and quite claustrophobic and a little bit tacky. I wanted this one to be modern and clean and fresh. And so that's what I've done here. It's all your typical style that I go for with the signs on the walls and the please pay here and the stuff that's dotted around. I pulled these in from Fundy. It felt... It felt like this area would have different parts of a gift shop that would reflect the different themed areas. So, spoiler alert, there's probably a pirate area and a western area coming in this park. Uh, <laughs> spoilers. Uh, and then just all of the stuff that's on the uh, on the shelves and whatever. So, I've just kitted this out quite nicely. But I really like how this sits. Like, it's just perfectly sitting there right at the end of what people would consider a main street and the one thing I've learned with playing Planet Coaster in the game is if you put all of your functional stuff at the front of your park so if you put all of your gift shops and your toilets and whatever at the front of the park when your park develops it's no longer used anymore you have to sort of force your guests down into this way so I'm going for a more wheel and spoke pattern with this one where I'm going to get the guests to this kind of area and then, then I'm going to spread circulating space from there so they're going to go out but they're going to have to pass through this area just to uh, get home and also get to other areas of the park as well. I already know what's coming in here, but I'm not going to tell you. And I already know what's coming in here. That's the next episode. So this is Chacholandia. This is the entrance of Chacholandia. Look at, look at, do you know what? I'm going to say it because I haven't said it yet. This turned out way better than I thought it would, especially when I was doing the ticket offices and I hated the original designs. Um, and I wasn't too keen on the color schemes of this one when I was doing the updates, but now the park has grown up around it. I'm way more comfortable with this. So guys, thank you so much for getting to the end of this episode. Can you let me know in the comments below whether you prefer the shorter format episodes or whether you prefer me waffling for another 20 minutes? Because uh, it would be helpful. Um, but yeah, so guys, thank you so much. If you have found this helpful, please leave a like on the video. That helps the alg algae thingy, as I call it, the algorithm to find us a new audience to see if anybody else is going to enjoy this park building. But of course, until we speak again, please look after yourselves. Take care now. Bye-bye.